Hello, my name is Luisa Estrada. This presentation is on the impacts of the Monroe Doctrine on Central American countries. Prepared for an intro to Chicanas Latinx Histories, History CH17 at the Claremont Colleges. This presentation will analyze a newspaper article titled The Central American Riddle by a U.S. diplomat. From the analysis of this primary source, I will highlight some historical context regarding the topic covered in the article. To be more precise, I will highlight some impacts of the Monroe Doctrine on Central American countries in the early 20th century. Before analyzing the primary source directly, let's keep in mind what's been occurring during the time and up to the article's publication date, January 1913. It is the last year of Williams Taft's administration, and with the help of Secretary of State Philander Knotts, the enforcement of dollar diplomacy. In short, Dollar diplomacy was a foreign policy under the Taft administration that used U.S. financial power to influence Latin American countries, specifically through loan agreements from American banks to control Latin American economies. However, because of the previous president, Theodore Roosevelt, and specifically his Roosevelt corollary, Taft was enabled to enforce U.S. military intervention and occupation of Central American countries. One distinct example was the intervention of Nicaragua in 1912 by U.S. Marines in support of a pro-U.S. regime that lasted until the 1930s. All of which started with the Monroe Doctrine, which the article puts quite simply, we will allow no foreign country to colonize or to conquer you. We assure you that your independence is made certain. You may conduct your own government and develop your own civilization. Now let's unpack what the primary source is and how I go about analyzing a primary source. Firstly, we know that the newspaper article was published in January 1913 by Evening Star and the author's name is unknown. Just from these details, we can assume that this article went through some editing from Evening Star. Thus, the author may have not said every word they wanted to. As I said earlier, the article is titled The Central American Riddle. Therefore, we, as a reader in this time period, will read something related to Central America. The newspaper itself is accessible to the general public in Washington, D.C., and is published in two pieces, where one piece is on pages 3 to 4, and the second is on page 14. Secondly, I then ask myself these questions while I'm reading what the author wrote. What is the intended argument of the author? Is the author writing just to the general public? Is what is being written credible? With all this in mind, this article speaks to and foreshadows various historical events that I can make a whole lecture about, but I'll be focusing on specific aspects of the article that I believe to be of some significance. As such, I would like to emphasize the importance of conducting your own research or investigations on the topics that I cover and generally anything that interests you. One source can tell you a lot, but only paints a small portion of the bigger picture. The U.S. diplomat paints the U.S. as the heroic sister republic to Central American countries as a front to convince readers to support intervention and policing of said countries. This starts with the author informing the reader of the constant chaos exploding from revolutions in Guatemala, Nicaragua, El Salvador, and Honduras, then reinforced with the story of the poor behaved president of a Central American Republic with his financial management and supposed letter from women in Nicaragua heroically saved by U.S. Marines. Though these descriptions may be factual, there is no evidence or explanation of where these sources came from. The author then manipulates the Monroe Doctrine to create the American responsibility to lend Central Americans a helping hand, creating the heroic American perspective. Lastly, to capture the reader to lend a helping hand, the author argues that there can be an increase in the wealth of American companies and citizens from the natural resources in Central American countries. In a larger context, we can see the author is using the Monroe Doctrine to persuade his readers to endorse in the U.S. growth and international policing power. This is evident with the emphasis of informing Washingtonians what's happening in Central America and why they should care.
Besides convincing Washingtonians to care about Central America, the U.S. diplomat tells us the main reason why the federal government is using the Monroe Doctrine during this time. As I mentioned earlier, the concluding argument of increasing the wealth of Americans is the purpose of using the Monroe Doctrine. The article's paraphrased Monroe Doctrine highlights that the U.S. will pour all its military power to prevent other countries, say European countries, to collect the wealth found in the natural reserves in Central America. This is further explained in detail in the second piece of the article. Additionally, the author focusing on the wealth of the country goes to show the exclusion of the Central American narrative during this time. Though it can be argued the author gave the Central American narrative with the letter from Nicaragua and briefly explaining the blind loyalty of Central Americans in their politicians, the U.S. diplomat goes no further. The exclusion of this narrative is evident when the author doesn't name the women who wrote the letter but gave this article space to write who the letter was addressed to, Rear Admiral Sutherland. The U.S. diplomat also goes the extra effort to exclude the name of the president of a Central American republic that is referred to at the beginning of the article. Much more historical context can be uncovered from reading this primary source, so I challenge you to learn more. If you would like to accept this challenge, I recommend starting with these books to find more impacts of the Monroe Doctrine on Central American countries. Thank you for watching.